Kara Carroll, who welcome to our studio. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. It came down in 89 November. Mm -hmm. This concert happened 10 months later. Mm -hmm. So he's got Sinead O'Connor you'll see coming up. You just saw Cindy Lauper. She did a great performance. That's amazing. Um, the Scorpions opened the show. There's a huge array of artists. The band will be on. Joey Mitchell will be on. I thought this had been created for this concert. Yeah, you, know, you think it would idea. be? Yeah, but mm -hmm. the wall idea isn't even about a wall. When he wrote the album, it's mm -hmm. about alienation. It signifies alienation. It's not about an actual wall, but the words to mm -hmm. the songs he wrote are amazingly fitting it to is. this occasion. A couple of the lyrics he changed, and those you know, loop fans that really know their Pink Floyd might be able to, to pick them out, but okay. mostly it's intact. It's he actually about. even jokingly once, after he left Pink Floyd, said, I'll never perform the wall again unless the Berlin Wall comes down. Ah. It came down within years of him saying that. He couldn't believe it. Lo and behold. Yeah, there was a big wall. There were landmines surrounding the wall for almost 30 years. This wall separated East and West Berlin. I don't think people today even realize the significance of that wall coming down. Oh, absolutely. You know, Roger Waters, he was a baby when his dad died in World War II, so... He understands the significance of war and what this wall meant. This was a worldwide broadcast event on radio stations. We had it on, a 97.9 The Loop, when it happened live. But to see it is just amazing. Yeah. The sound of the DVD is incredible. It is like you're there. Yeah, I mean, I know they had, uh, I guess, some glitches. Yeah. When it goes out live, things happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was almost time for it to go on. They realized they were having power problems with the electricity, so they actually started airing some of their dress rehearsal so that it wasn't dead air on all the radio stations it was being simulcast to. But I think Sinead O'Connor is coming up, yeah. right? And hers was what that was one of the power Yeah, she was one of the few people that refused to stay after and <laughs> re-record their parts. Uh -huh. So Roger wasn't very happy with her after. In fact, if you buy the DVD, you will see him uh -huh. talk about that, the issue with Sinead. Oh, okay, but the extra material, that's... Actually, those listening to 97.9 The Loop, you just missed the most awesome animation. Oh. <laughs> it was beautiful, and that's the G Gerald Scarf. Yes, the yes. guy who did the animation in The Wall, the movie. Right. Um, he's done a lot of their album cover art. Right, right, so, right. So, pretty cool. Well, they got together in 65. Sid Barrett was actually the genius behind Pink Floyd. Roger would even say that. Um, but he also was a little out there. You know, it was the 60s, it was experimental. Right. Um, he became unworkable. I mean, on stage, he couldn't perform. There was already, you know, Nick Mason and Rick White were in the band, and okay. said they brought in David Gilmore just to kind of cover during live shows, but then they realized he was actually kind of covering, recording the next album, too. So Sid was out, David was in, and then that was Pink Floyd. And Roger Waters took over kind yeah. of the creative vision. Yeah, every band. album, he took more and more and more control. He's very much a perfectionist, so... You know, by the time The Wall came around, he was so into that. I think, you know, they spent 10 months in the studio before he let anybody hear anything because he was so worried it wasn't perfect. And while they're doing it, they are building a wall, just like when Pink Floyd toured with The Wall, it was the same thing. So they're building it brick by brick, which right by where the Berlin Wall was, and it's, it's amazing. And at this point in the video, it's almost completely built. I think we're two songs away from it away totally from being it. Kara, what is The Wall? How has it influenced you? Where were you when The Wall came oh, out? Um, well, I was in school, so We Don't Need No Education was, you know, very big. <laughs> very big. Yes. But, you know, I think I was just getting into rock and roll, really into rock and roll when this came out. And it's ironic that now I work at The Loop, where we play Pink Floyd. I mean, I listen to it all the time. I mean, I had to. And now... You know, it's part of my job, and I love it. And do you think uh, The Wall is as popular now as it was? <laughs> you know, it's amazing. There are so many teenagers that are into Pink Floyd. I can't even believe it. I get more calls from young people for Pink Floyd. <sighs> that's amazing. Yeah, that's they're very influential. That's amazing. No one could even really label them. Okay. They were space rock, space experimental rock. rock. Psych psychedelic. Yeah. 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 And uh, they just kept getting bigger Every and album. bigger and expanding. Yeah, and expanding. Dark Side of the Moon was just huge, incredible. Would you say that that put them on the map? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it put them on the map for a good oh, 25 million albums sold or more. Oh my yeah. gosh. Part of that is because when it came out on CD, people started buying it again. So, but it's you have to have it. You have to have Dark Side of the Moon. You have to have the wall. Welcome, Kara Caribou, Thanks for having midday me. host. Nice to be here. That it's, was awesome. Oh my goodness. I know. To see if you can't see the visuals, to see Paul singing to the wall. I mean, the isolation, trying to call through. Yeah, if you're listening to 97.9 The Loop, you should try to turn on 11 right now. Yeah. That was Paul Carrick. He was with Mike and the Mechanics. It was Squeeze, Ace, a lot of bands. Right. Awesome. Oh, I just love how he did Hate You. Carrie, you also said that you have been to Roger Waters a couple of Oh, yeah, he's been here something? a couple of times. I saw him at the Rosemont Theater. Mm -hmm. He was awesome. He's so good live. And Snowy White, the guy who's doing uh, most of the guitar solos you're seeing, yeah. was there. He toured with Pink Floyd when they did The Wall shows themselves as well. He's mm -hmm. phenomenal. That's why the guitar sounds so good. And this, it's him. Wow. So, yeah, he's great to see live. I know people are so familiar with uh, the music from the wall. People know it, but not that many people are probably that familiar with what we're seeing here. Even yeah. though they, they did this at all their concerts, 
how many people actually get to go. Right. To actually, and this is not long after Roger Waters left Pink Floyd, and most people didn't know mm -hmm. the names of the people in Pink Floyd. They knew the music, they knew the band. Right. They couldn't know. tell you what they looked like or their names. So this kind of put Roger Waters on the map. People finally knew his name. Right, right. So. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because honestly, I didn't either. I was like, oh, look at this. He's doing Pink. Okay, yeah. I, know, I know the songs. <laughs> you know, I know the voices are different on this version with all these different artists. They did not see what we are seeing this evening. Right. I mean, they saw the big ball, but when you go in for the close-ups of these performers, yeah. and I imagine the sound system, yeah. I imagine we're getting You can't better. have it sound that good for 500,000 people as it will on, on this DVD. Right. Way. Which is what Loop listeners can do right now. For everyone listening to 97.9 The Loop, call in and make a donation. You Absolutely. Know?